Hi, I'm Sean Takoon and I teach in the curriculum and instruction program for visual impairments. Um, we've got a very unique place here in this library as instructional materials look different for folks who are blind and visually impaired. What is within the purview of a library has changed drastically in the last 20 years from books, now to videos, to managing digital materials, and sometimes devices. This library here helps us put those books, modern devices, classical tools in the hands of our online students across the entire state. So all of these materials have to be organized very carefully because your average Braille book, this book alone is one of six volumes that in print only occupies one book. So it takes up a huge expanse of space and that's not space that we have in our offices. This library provides that space on shelves where these materials can be stored but also checked out to students. Some of those books though today are in a digital format. And so something like a digital book player, this Victor Stream, is something that all the students have to learn how to use and they all have to take turns. These are really expensive devices and we don't have enough to give all 18 or 20 of our students at a time. So the library helps us manage these book readers, which have no images, looks very different from your smartphone, looks a little old timey, as it were, circa 1980s, but you don't need all of that if you're just doing it with your ears. To get these books to the students so that they can read the book in three weeks, send it back, and then get it to another student so they can all complete their assignments in a 16 week semester, is something that can't be done without the assistance of an instructional media center. So Braille literacy books will have sometimes embossed pictures to be helpful, but most of the book is just print, unlike a lot of other early childhood reading books. And so this particular one just has letters throughout so the student can practice their letters. And then they'll have uh, a sample word or numbers for them to practice as they go. And these books will also have some shapes and other early learning tools in them. But to us, these books look incredibly plain by comparison because we're used to the colors in the pictures. But if you have no sight, that's as, that's as immersive as you need. Some of the more involved books will have more complex shapes in them. They'll have uh, embossed diagrams of the shapes of different objects, like this apple here, um, or perhaps the school bus. And then along with it, they'll have the words on each. So these are just what you would normally get for early learning tools in early literacy. And you'll see that a lot of the images too are made up of simple shapes, which builds on the literacy because these same sh shapes will be used in say high school classes when students are looking at maps and other areas. So the consistency is very important. But that also goes up to the level of what if your teacher has a visual impairment and reads braille themselves. So this is a teacher's manual for that curriculum. And you can tell the Braille looks very different. This is what's called interpoint Braille. So the pages actually have Braille on both sides of it. To someone like me that has vision and has learned to read Braille primarily visually, it's really hard to read it because it's hard to discriminate the dots going up versus the dots going down. But to someone that reads Braille, all they feel is what comes up and this is perfect as can be. And you can fit a whole lot more in a book. The book is kind of fatter as well because of the dots going up and down. That means that when you send Braille, you have to send it a special way in the mail to make sure that they don't smash it and it's preserved. So the Perkins Brailler has been with us for a really long time. Um, in fact, I can't remember the year off date, but the design of it has not really changed um, since it was originally created. It is a solid metal device, weighs about seven, eight pounds, um, very difficult to carry around with you all the time, but that's why most teachers or students with visual impairments are pretty buff. You'll see those ladies don't mess with them. It is a manual typewriter where you make all of the braille letters with these six keys. Space bar, backspace, carriage return. And whenever you use it, it makes a fair amount of noise. Um, not to mention the refreshing ding that some of us remember. In order to get the students this $800 Braille writer to their home, we have to use the library services to have a way of tracking, checking out, and maintaining these devices so that every teacher in the state who works with a blind child knows Braille with a first-hand knowledge 
so they can provide the best services to their students. We couldn't do it any other way. We have to send these devices out for students wherever they are. And almost every student, regardless of how old they are, even if they're, they generally get one of these when they're about four or five years old. So you can imagine a five-year-old carrying around an eight-pound Braille typewriter wherever they're going. And some of those kids are a little small anyway from being preemies, but Braille plays such an intimate role in their life. It's their connection to information that they can't get any other way. It really is an intimate friend. And by sending these out to our students and having them learn their Braille on it, sometimes to their chagrin, they get that a little bit of that same connection that a child with visual impairment has with Braille. It's very personal.